Hey, what's up, everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create what I would call a signal burst effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. So it's going to look a little something like this. A neat little effect where it looks like a tower or some sort of communication device is actually emitting a signal. If you'd like to learn more effects like this, check out the course that I created on Premiere Pro. It is a really in-depth course that will teach you Premiere Pro from scratch so that you can create effects like this on your own without needing to look at tutorials in the future. You'll just know all the tools. Check out that link in the description below. Anyway, let's get started on this. First thing you want to do is import your footage. I got this footage from Envato Elements, um, which is a great little subscription service so you can get all these cool little pieces of footage. You import it into your timeline like so. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the layer. So you're going to find the layer. You're going to take it and you're going to duplicate it upwards. I'm holding the Alt key on Windows, Command on Mac, and it'll go up and it'll create a duplicate layer. We're then going to apply two effects. One of them is going to be the track mat key. So we're going to put that effect on. And then we're going to create the bevel key. Or we're going to bring on the bevel effect. And that's under video effects obsolete bevel alpha. That just means that at some point they'll remove this effect in the future, but they should have a replacement effect for it. We're going to put both of these on here. Now, before we can actually see what they're going to do, we need to create ourselves that sort of ripple outwards. To do that, we're going to go to our tools, look for the ellipse tool could be under the pin or the rectangle tool. We're gonna to draw a circle around the center here. So in this situation, we wanna grade it center is right on this broadcast tower. Over here in the effect graphics controls, we wanna make sure that the fill is not on. We don't wanna fill here. We want a stroke. We want the stroke to be white, and this will be how strong the signals are. If you want like really tiny little guys, this would be a good one. And if you want really thick guys, this would be where you'd bring it up to like 33. We can go a little thinner this time, and I'll show you what that looks like. It also has a really neat effect. You'd probably need to increase the frequency of them coming out, but it'll create a really neat effect from that. We're then going to make sure that the graphics tab is all the way over at the edge here. On the left side, under vector motion, make sure that you have the graphics tab uh, selected. On the bottom here is your shape tool. Drop that down, go to the scale, and we want this to start at zero. So we're gonna turn on the little toggle animation. We're gonna put this at zero. So now, when we copy and paste this effect, there aren't going to be a whole bunch of these little guys sitting there. They're all going to be gone because the scale's at zero. So we're going to then move forward about 15 frames or so. I'm holding the shift key when I click the step forward, so it goes five at a time. Make the scale until it goes past the camera. So keep it going, and then it disappears right there. We're then going to take a quick peek at this. It's going to get a little choppy here. Um, as we start doing this because of the graphics layers all interacting with each other. So you can see there's our first one. Now, we're going to take this and we're going to drag this down over so that we have more view here. We need to copy and paste this a whole bunch of times and move them all around. So click on the shape layer, control C, V. You can even like sort of rename these um, so that you don't get lost. So this is one, this is the second burst. And then we'll keep that going so we understand which burst is which. We go down into the scale tool. I'm going to drag this outwards. So let's say we want this one to be closer. So we're going to move forward. We need some sort of mathematical thing. Otherwise, the the variance between them will be off and it'll look a little funny. So we're going to put two frames in between each one of these. So we're then going to copy and paste again. Control C V. Make sure that you rename this one to three. It's tedious, but it helps you later on when you're trying to create these things. Move forward two frames, drag them over, and I'm going to create a few more of these and speed it up as I go so you don't have to sit here and watch me do this. All right, so now I'm done, and now this is what we have going for us. We have this big burst of communication coming outwards. Uh, looks a lot different than the first effect, but that's what's fun about this effect is you can change it all around. Now what we need to do is we need to create that sort of clear view through them so they aren't these big white objects that are like sort of, it looks like they're actually manipulating this space in here. So we go to our second effect here, and remember how we applied that track mat and that bevel? We're gonna go with the mat, and we're gonna select video three, where the graphics layer is, V3 right here. Click on it, and you're going to see that immediately it's looking pretty good, and that's because we have the bevel here. If the bevel is above, by the way, all of the things will disappear because the bevel is applied before the track mat. We don't want that. You'll actually get a bevel around the outside edge of the, the frame. We don't want that. We want it to select everything and then apply a bevel. So now you see that we have this see-through effect and we have a bevel that is working properly here. You can create 
increase or decrease it depending on how you want the effect. If you want it really subtle, you can do like a 0.1 sort of bevel, which may even be too short to see. You can kind of see things here. If you really, really look closely, it'll look like sort of space is being manipulated, but you probably want a little higher than that. So we're going to go like 0.3, maybe. Very light. Mm, 0.7 is probably good. Yeah, so now you can see it right there. Now, like I said, it's going to get very intensive. So if you use the I and O key, so in this situation, I'm going to click the O button right there. It creates an out point for me. I click the Enter key. It's going to render out all these frames. And now when it plays back, you we can watch it in full glory here. And now it looks like the radio is transmitting out signals, a nice little effect for a storytelling element like so. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below or on our website at adobemasters.net. If you'd like to continue learning with me in a very organized manner, but, but still through tutorials where we're going to be creating a ton of effects, check out the course link in the description below. It's a great little course and it has a lot of awesome features that will really make you a good editor in Premiere Pro. So check that out. I created it from scratch and I'm really proud of it. Subscribe if you want to see more videos similar to this one. I make videos on all Adobe products, and I am going to keep working at different products so that there is a nice backlog of Photoshop and After Effects and everything like that. Thanks, everyone, and until next time, see ya.